dejar que te perdone y te deje en paz como quieran. ¿Quieres eso o quieres seguir teniendo pedo? No, mira, no quiero pedo. Mira, me perdón, perdón. De rodillas, de rodillas y no. No puedo pedir. Bueno, pues ahorita mismo le marco a mi familia. Mi familia no está enterada de esto. ¿Quieres? Ahorita le marco a mi mamá, le marco a mi papá, que vengan y que hagan un desmadre. ¿Quieres eso? Perdón, de rodillas. Puebla, México. 21 years old Vielka Pulido, also known as Lady Humiladero, was leaving the gym with her 39 years old boyfriend Joel Abraham Suri Santos when some unknown individuals attacked her and her boyfriend. They shot 26 detonations and fled the scene. Vielka was born in the early 2000s in Mexico, although it is not confirmed whether she was born in the city Puebla or Chihuahua. Information regarding her childhood and family is scarce, only her mother's name, Viridiana Pulido Juarez, is known. Since she was a child, she dazzled due to her beauty and blonde hairs however her public notoriety was not due to her beauty but was because of a video that she posted on her social media when she was only 15 years old. Where she forced one of her classmates to kneel and ask for forgiveness because she was speaking badly about her and her mother. Que te perdone y te dejen paz, como quieran. ¿Quieres eso o quieres seguir teniendo pedo? No, mira, no quiero pedo. Mira, me perdón, perdón. De rodillas, de rodillas y no. No puedo pedo. Bueno, pues ahorita mismo le marco a mi familia. Mi familia no está enterada de esto. ¿Quieres? Ahorita le marco a mi mamá, le marco a mi papá, que vengan y que hagan un desmadre. ¿Quieres eso? Perdón, de rodillas. This video went viral in Mexico and caused network users to nickname her Lady Humiliator. In addition, this event unleashed an unprecedented controversy in Puebla regarding mistreatment and harassment, especially in school environments. The enormous public exposure of the case led Vielka's mother, Viridiana, to hold a press conference where she apologized to the young girl attacked in the video and assured that she did not justify her daughter's attitudes. The woman assured that Vielka would change her behavior, but at the same time, in a certain way, she did justify what happened. By stating that her daughter had also been a victim of similar behavior by other young girls. On the other hand, she assured that her family had no ties to organized crime. After that incident, the family chose to keep a low profile. February 7, 2020 Two years later, on the night of Friday, Viridiana was involved in a physical altercation with another woman at a popular night establishment in Puebla called Mallet. According to her, it was apparently revealed that Vielka's mother was under the influence of alcohol when she started a confrontation in the local bathroom. During the confrontation, Viridiana threw the woman to the ground twice. The aggression was so intense that the waiters and customers of the establishment were unable to contain her. Information about the event spread quickly, with images and testimonies, causing a scandal in the city. It was not known exactly what motivated the beating and the identity of the woman was not officially revealed. However, some reports from the time suggest that she was the wife of an important local businessman. After this violent event, the family once again opted for a low profile, and as the years went by, the incidents involving both Vielka during her adolescence and her mother were forgotten. But the young girl liked to be seen and wanted to let those who criticized her at some point know that she led a successful life. She then resumed her activity on social networks with the pseudonym Lavendi. The girl quickly gained popularity because she shared her luxurious lifestyle and also because of her stunning beauty. Apparently she was studying medicine at the popular autonomous university of the state of Puebla. In addition to these studies, Vielka also managed two businesses, one called Vendi Shop, focused on the sale of high-end Arabic perfumes, and another called Vendi Beauty, which offered hair care treatment and aesthetic enhancement services. In addition, according to her social networks, she occasionally also participated in some sessions as a photography model. August 2023 Vielka reported the theft of one of her original Dolce and Gabbana bag, while she was at a night establishment called Ricotta, located in Cholula. She said she knew who had taken it, and warned that in addition to revealing the identity, she planned to file an official complaint with the authorities, if they did not return her accessory, which according to her had an approximate cost of $4,000. After this incident, Vielka received support from a large number of users on social networks. However, due to the tone of her message, others brought up her alias Lady Humiliator again, this led her to change the privacy settings of her accounts, which became private. Little was known about Vielka after this event, except that she had begun a relationship with an enigmatic man almost 20 years older than her. Named Joel Abraham Suri Santos, he apparently had a company that produced very significant economic income. April 3, 2024 According to a security camera record in the area, Vielka and her partner Joel 
were in a gym located on Zabalita Road, in Puebla. Around 10 in the morning they finished their training and headed to their car, a white BMW, which was also armored. Joel opened the door for Vielka to enter the vehicle, and when she was about to close it, a gray car occupied by two men appeared on the scene. The subjects showed no intention of stealing her belongings, since they directly went to discharge their firearms at Vielka and Joel. The men was the first to fall to the ground due to multiple injuries, while Vielka remained inside the passenger seat. One of the attackers then got out of the vehicle where they were going to fire more shots at the couple, who evidently did not have a single chance of leaving alive. It has been said that this last action by the gunman was probably intended to ensure that neither of them stayed alive. After firing more than 20 detonations, the shooters quickly disappeared along the Zabalita road, leaving behind a heartbreaking scene. Vielka and Joel were hit by at least 10 of these projectiles. According to the story of those who observed what happened, some people who were in the surrounding area and who witnessed the terrible attack stopped a patrol to ask for help. State and municipal police officers quickly responded to the scene, as did advanced emergency medical system personnel, but they could do nothing for the couple. After evaluating the situation, they determined that Bielka, and her partner Joel, had lost their lives instantly. A few minutes later, the area was cordoned off and guarded by ministerial agents and experts from the Attorney General's Office of the State of Puebla. This to carry out all the corresponding procedures. The investigation also began to identify the perpetrators of the crime and determine the motive behind the incident. Shortly after, said organization issued a statement, in which it was reported that 20 ballistic elements of 9mm caliber and 6 of 45 caliber had been found. These were sent to the ballistics laboratory to carry out all the corresponding analyses. At the same time, the prosecutor's office began to work on identifying the vehicle in which the alleged perpetrators of the crime were traveling and determining the route they followed after the attack. On the other hand, the Secretary of the Interior, Javier Aquino Limon, declared that one of the lines of investigation into the event was related to a possible settling of scores against Joel and it was suspected that this could derive from illicit activities in which he was involved. Regarding this hypothesis, although there is no confirmation from official sources, it has been mentioned that Joel was dedicated to the cargo transport trade. It is speculated that due to this business he could be involved in activities outside the law, such as theft and trading in auto parts. April 4, 2023 the Secretary of the Interior of Puebla made new statements about the case he reported that authorities would investigate all people who had ties to both Bielka and her boyfriend. While the justice system and the Puebla police began investigations into what had happened, social networks became a sounding board for the event. The truth is that the terrible crime of Bielka and her partner became a trend on social networks, as well as in browser searches during the first hours in which the news became known. Generating a great commotion in the community. Meanwhile, the grief of the couple's family and friends was overwhelming. They placed candles and flowers at the place where Bielka and Joel had been killed, as a sign of mourning and also to honor their memory. As the judicial process progressed, it was allowed that on Friday, April 5, 2024, Bielka's family could finally hold a ceremony to say goodbye to her. Shortly before noon, a carriage accompanied by a small convoy of cars arrived with the young woman's remains at the Valle de Los Angeles funeral home in the capital of Puebla. The family opted for a very discreet service, only allowing people from their closest circle to enter the place. Hours later, almost late at night, the state attorney general, Gilberto Iguera Bernal, confirmed that they had identified the couple's attackers. He assured that criminal action would soon appear against the suspects and that a request for arrest warrants would be made. While they begin to deal with their grief, just days after the loss that left an irreparable void for them. The family and friends of both Bielka and Joel hope that the authorities will clarify as soon as possible what happened and that both will receive justice.